Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. As you've probably noticed over the last few weeks, it's been pretty much non-stop with new information for the upcoming live action series and for Obi-Wan Kenobi in particular, we've had a bunch of character rumours and leaks. Well today my dear Meglorians, we've got another one because Kamel Nanjiani has finally broken his silence about his involvement in the Kenobi series. When we first got the cast announcement all the way back in March, he was listed with the other actors, but until now we've had absolutely no clue on which which character he's going to be playing. However, in a new interview with the Rolling Stone, he hinted at what kind of role he has. Now the great thing about this article is that the Rolling Stone are very reputable for all things pop culture, so their interview with him has a lot of substance. Let's dive into it and see what he had to say. They kick things off with a striking title, it's f***ing Obi-Wan. That's fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Kamel Nanjiani previews Disney Plus Kenobi. Right off the bat, a lot of enthusiasm. Here we go, let's begin. The newly muscled up Kamel Nanjiani plays Marvel's immortal superhero Kingo in November the 5th's Eternals. But that's just the beginning of the former Silicon Valley star's radical career makeover. In our recent interview with Nanjiani, he also discusses his role in 2022's Disney Plus series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, in which Ewan McGregor reprises the title role for the first time since Revenge of the Sith. Here is what Nanjiani had to say about the top secret show, which is set between episodes 3 and 4 in the saga. Now the first question that he's asked is how did your role in Obi-Wan Kenobi come about? In his own words he said, my agents called me and it was the whole group of them that never call you. And I was like, okay, this is either amazing news or really awful news. And they're like, they want you to play a part in Obi-Wan and apparently it's substantial. So then I talked to Deborah Chow and we had a great conversation and the character sounded awesome. I was so excited about this character. And then he says we haven't seen this exact thing in Star Wars yet. This is like a new version of a type of Star Wars character we've seen before. And she was trying to sell me on it. And I was like I was going to do it before the conversation. It was kind of perfect. In the next question, Nanjiani is asked, what was it like on set? He said, I had this moment. I'd heard Ewan McGregor was super nice. And then we got to know each other a little bit, just hanging out and talking. And then there was this weird moment where I'm talking to Ewan and they yell action. And he'd start talking to me and I was like, oh, I'm talking to Obi-Wan right now. This is not Ewan McGregor. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi that I'm talking to. My character is supposed to be a little bit intimidated by him. And I was a little bit intimidated. And the final question that he was asked is about the volume which is that remarkable virtual set also used on The Mandalorian where the CGI is happening all around you in real time. How did that affect things for you? And he answered, you really feel like you're there. The first scene we shot it was Star Wars outside the windows with aliens walking around and ships flying by and all of this stuff. But the rest of it just looks like a warehouse. So I did a couple of takes and the new one was like, you know none of this is real. I knew the windows weren't real but the walls weren't either. I looked and I was like, whoa, the walls are projected. The only thing that was real in the whole room was the desk that I was sitting at. It was really, really exciting. So a lot of really interesting stuff to pick out from this article, in particular the way he describes his role. He said, we haven't seen this exact thing in Star Wars yet. This is like a new version of a type of Star Wars character we've seen before. Now immediately I thought about variations within Star Wars alien species like Gungans or Twi'leks, but I think from everything we've heard, I think it's very likely he's going to be playing a human or a human-like character. He may have been referring to a type of pilot or guard or something like that, but the way that he described his role as substantial gives away that he's not going to be a supporting role, he's going to be part of the main cast. So whoever he plays, I think it's going to be more important than we know. Another thing I picked up on is how he says his character is supposed to be a little bit intimidated by Obi-Wan. This implies that his character knew Obi-Wan or someone who knows about Obi-Wan's status as an exiled Jedi. Now I personally have my own theory based on Kamel Nanjiani's words. I'm inclined to believe that he's going to be playing Darth Krayt at this time known as Asherad Het. A former Jedi who survived Order 66, Het moved to Tatooine to live amongst the Tusken Raiders. He once terrorized Beru and a young Luke when she was picking mushrooms that grew on the moisture evaporators. And while he's currently Legends, if he is canonized then this could give Obi-Wan a vital adversary on Tatooine. If he is playing Asherad Het, 
This would be in line with all of the physical training that Nanjiani's been doing for Obi-Wan Kenobi. I've seen a lot of speculation that he could be playing a grown-up version of Kitster, young Anakin's friend from The Phantom Menace, and while that would be a lovely cameo that I think a lot of us want to see, if Lucasfilm really wanted to bring Kitster back, they would have hired the original actor who is now all grown up, Drav Chanchani. And while his career has taken a very big turn over the years, he's always been attached to his role in Episode 1. So I would wager that Kamel is playing a different character, probably probably a powerful force user, or at the very least, someone who is important to Obi-Wan's story in the show. I'm super excited by all of the reports that we've been getting lately, and they're helping to piece the show together in our minds to help speculation. But ultimately, it's the unknowns of the series that are the most thrilling. So now, my dear friends, we're going to be talking about the Book of Boba Fett, because StarWars.com have just teased a tiny glimmer of Boba in a new promotional for their Bring Home the Bounty campaign. In the poster, we see Grogu, but next to him, we have concept art for Boba Fett. Now, this is definitely for the Book of Boba and not the Mandalorian, because the armor and helmets, which do have the new paint job that we saw in Season 2, are worn out just like the recent Book of Boba Fett poster. His scarf is also a lot shorter, which means that this image, or this rendering of Boba, was taken from early concept work for the Book of Boba Fett. Just a small tease, but really exciting. And so finally, my dear Meglorians, a quick update for the Mandalorian Season 3. Filming has been going now for a few weeks, but Carl Weathers in particular who plays Grief Karga has not only confirmed that his character is back, but more importantly, he starts filming his scenes tomorrow, which is now today, considering this tweet is over 12 hours old. Things are truly getting underway, guys. This is so exciting. And now, my friends, a little bit of bonus news. Star Wars The Hidden Empire is the third installment that's going to conclude the Marvel Comics trilogy by Charles Saul. Star Wars does love a trilogy. In fact, the movies have had three of them. And now, as Marvel Comics prepares to publish the end of its first line-wide Star Wars event, War of the Bounty Hunters, as well as tease Crimson Reign as another the line-wide event. It's also introducing a third event whose details is unknown, but it's going to be called the Hidden Empire. And the reason this is so big is because based on War of the Bounty Hunters and Crimson Reign, they're going to expand upon the story of the original trilogy, and it could tie into Grand Admiral Thrawn and what's coming in the Ahsoka series and future seasons of The Mandalorian. We've also heard a recent rumour that the Lando series is not going to be what we expect, and it's going to tie into the Ahsoka series as well. So we really cannot neglect the comics, and I know they're not very popular amongst everyone, but I give everything a chance. So the third instalment, The Hidden Empire, is going to come sometime in 2022, which is really convenient because that's when we get The Mandalorian Season 3 and The Bad Batch Season 2, which are also going to tie into this big plan by Lucasfilm. We have Star Wars Andor and Obi-Wan Kenobi next year as well, but they're from a much earlier point in the timeline. So I think The Hidden Empire is definitely going to be important for The Bad Batch, The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and other projects going forward. But what do you guys think? Are you looking forward to this? And what did you make of all of the stories that we talked about in today's video? If you enjoyed today's news update, you know what to do. Give me a big fat thumbs up and show me some love. Say hi in the comments down below and don't be afraid to interact with this Megalorian community. Subscribe, hit the bell, do all that good stuff down below. And also my friends, if you're feeling generous, please consider becoming a patron. The link is down there and you get exclusive access to my Discord, videos that are not found here on YouTube and much more. But otherwise, may the force be with you. I hope you all have an amazing day. I'm Star Wars Meg and I'll see you in the next one. Fun.